we have Luciferian Tower, the newest album from Godspeed You, Black Emperor. That exclamation point always bugged me. Yeah, yeah it's oh, it, it's one of those. F- why? Why do you have to? Why do you have to do the hipster thing of having random piece of punctuation in the middle of the band name? It's almost as bad as lowercase fun, period. Because, because of course, fucking, ah, it's very difficult to explain my frustrations with that sort of thing. But anyway, um, yeah, if you're not familiar with Godspeed, you, Black Emperor, uh, they're a sort of experimental post-rock ambient they're an experimental band um well experimental music collective is what they're described as so basically they're one of those side projects for lots of different people um if you've seen 28 days later you'll know one of their songs uh east hastings um but yeah, I guess start with your opinion and then go to mine. There's, honestly, despite being a pretty huge fan of post rock, as you may have you know, understood that from what the fuck I'm about, um, <laughs> you may have. Hmm. But um, it is eventually pick up. Luckily, I mean the um, anthem for no state, the final three parts of the album is where things finally start to build up and actually. But I thought it was a pretty damn solid selection of songs. It's unfortunate that it's only half of the album and it's the second half of the album, so I think we know what to make of that. Mm. I mean, it, I just feel like the first half wasn't really going anywhere, and when it comes to this kind of thing, you kind of need you know, the build up and the direction and the climax and the letdown, just the basic structures of what you'd expect. But it just felt like it was just wandering around in a constant circle and just going back on itself and. I mean, like kind of ants when they get confused and just death spiral into oblivion. Just like that. It's all going to circle around over and over again until they just die and nothing happens. They end up with thousands of dead ants everywhere. Which is interesting to say the least because it's opposite to how I felt about the album. I mean, my reaction was basically that I felt like I needed a cigarette after it. Which could be taken in, in a good or bad way. Well, for me, it was basically like musical sex. <laughs> um. I, I will admit, part of my opinion when I very first listened through it was coloured by the fact that right before it, I'd listened through the Fifth Harmony album. Yeah, that would have uh, changed anyone's opinion, I think. Yeah, but whilst that does slightly knock down the score, because re-listening to it, I realised it's not quite as good as I initially thought. I still really like this album. Um, I've been trying to figure out a way to describe what it reminds me of. It's kind of like things like um, Electric Storm in Hell, if anyone's familiar with that. Um, it's also It also has kind of vibes of um, the 2001 A Space Odyssey soundtrack. And I kind of get Vangelis vibes at times. I, I guess I can hear the Vangelis in there. And, well, one of my all-time favourite movies is Blade Runner. And less said about the sequel, the better. That's for your other review. Yes. Anyway. Yeah, um, I can kind of see the Vangelis in here, and I do like Vangelis as well, so... I think this is one of those albums that I should like, but don't, I guess. So as you just kind of feel, you know, you see something, or listen to something, or watch something, or play something, or other variants in that situation, and you'll be like, I really should like this. There's plenty of reasons why I should like this, but I don't. And I don't know why. I've had that case with a few bands where it's sort of like, I have no idea why I don't like this band, but I just don't. You, know, you, can, you can tell it's technically right, and, you know, the songwriting is not a fault, and this just doesn't work for you, it just doesn't click in your mind, I guess. Mm. I mean, I wouldn't say that's true for this album, simply because I, I do like, like the last three parts song uh, blob. Of, I don't know whether they blob that it works, but eh. I, I would say one thing that does benefit it is when I listen to it, I just let it completely wash over me. 
Mm, that's the kind of thing you would do with this kind of genre. Yeah, uh, I didn't. I wasn't doing anything. I was just letting it flow over me and letting it just pour and consume. And I think it benefited greatly from doing that. Um, yeah, I'd say. I would actually like to gush about this album, but ah, unfortunately, we are limited by the nature of these reviews. Well, I don't know. Fuck the police and do it anyway. So if, I, if I get your entire gush and stick it in like a one-minute ramble. Uh, I just, I just re- I love this album. There's no two ways about it. I I love this album. I I heavily encourage everyone to give it a listen, um, especially if post rock is your bag. Um, also, if psychedelia again, we keep a lot of psychedelia has been the um, psychedelia seems to be the catchword for rock at the moment. Yeah, yeah, I can say that. It, I was just kind of wondering going back to the the old the oldy few years ago, many years ago kind of thing. Hmm, yeah. But that kind of thing does seem to be kind of in vogue these days, I guess. As long as we don't end up with anyone trying to copy Vogue by Madonna, because God, we don't need that. Can we just have Vogue by Madonna that's covered by, I don't know, Faith No More or something? That could work. <laughs> or Quiddle of Filth, or just something that completely changed the idea of the song. Actually, I can see Cradle of Filth doing something like that as a joke. Second eye, that's why I mentioned it. <laughs> I think that's another reason why I gravitate towards them, because of the fact that they don't take themselves too seriously. But none the more for that. Um, our scores are going to differ quite dramatically, I know that for a fact. So, what score are you giving it? I'm going to have to give it a two, I think, and that's entirely for the last three songs. If it was just those three songs and that was like an EP or something, I'd probably give it a good four or so. Uh, but knowing it's only like half the album, I can't really give it much higher than two. Wait, okay, I'm a bit confused here. Because you're saying about the last three songs, but the version I've got only has four songs. Wait, what? Unless you're kind of, I think I know what you're doing. It's because the, um, the uh, second, uh, Boss's Hang and Anthem for No State are split into three parts. Right. I'm trying to think I've got anyway. It really is. I'm doing this for very entire hours. Then Bosses Hang Part 1, 2, and 3. And Fam Fam and Then another for New State Part 1, 2, and 3. Ah. Uh. So what it is. I've seen Kiss Like That before. It was like, um... can't play the name. Francis the Mute by Mars Volta. That album has like six different track listings, despite being the same album, because people keep listing it in different ways, no matter where you look. Also, it's like three different versions of it in different countries that all have different track listings. Yeah. So because it's all listed differently. It's fucking confusing. But I reckon a similar thing probably has happened here. Mm. I mean, the official track listing, uh, CD and vinyl editions are just four tracks, and then digital edition is eight tracks. Which is probably what's going on here, because the digital edition probably has those two tracks split into three parts each, while the CD version has it as one. Like if you look at um, Winter's Gate by Insomnium, which we did a review of, mm. the CD version, have it. if you copy that over, it has it as one track, but if you look at it on digital versions, it has it split into seven parts. Yeah. I personally think maybe your opinion might might be changed a bit if it wasn't split into different tracks. Because, I don't know, that's, splitting it up seems a bit... That would jar for me. Well, it doesn't really change anything, because it still plays through. They just flow into each other. Yeah, but I, I don't know. It's still literally the same music, just in case it's listed differently. Mm. Unless you're actually looking at the tracks as it's playing, then it, uh. it won't sound any different. Mm. But anyway, um, yeah, my rating is a five out of five. So this is a con- this is unusual for us to say the least. Especially when it comes to post rock, yeah. <laughs> Normally, I'm the one. Well, actually, no, that's post metal that I'm the one giving the lower rating. Post rock is it's kind of weird. Post rock, I quite like. Post metal, I'm not that big a fan of unless it's Cult of Luna. Yeah. But uh, if you're going to listen to this album, I would personally say go with Anthem for No State, because it, it stands out quite considerably to me compared to the rest. And I I just feel like it should be listened to from start to finish, because, again, it feels like the sort of album you should just let wash over you. I do listen, I generally, unless I'm out like using my phone or whatever, I will listen to whole albums. Mm. But it just feels, in my opinion, that the first like three tracks, as in this case... Just kind of feel like 
kind of meandering build up to the what is the final track. Oh, well. different strokes for uh, different strokes for different folks. Yeah. Well, if we always had the same opinions as each other, it's, it would be very boring. So. Yeah. Anyway, next album. Well, next section, even. 